All right, so this video is going to show you how to do redrill your axles or your um, uh, other types of drive shaft flange. It might be on a uh, bearing. How to redrill it for larger studs. So these Curry axles here for a live four nine inch live axle. Um, it came with these little studs, right? And uh, I need to upgrade to some ones that are larger and longer. And to get the length that I wanted so that I could potentially use spacers or uh, be easier to get some really large wheels on. But, you know, I'm not gonna have much, I'm not gonna have much meat on here by the time I get through this, the brake rotor, um, any kind of little spacer, and then, you know, uh, actually through the wheel, right? So this is not gonna give me enough. So in steps these, these are, this is the part number here, 100-7703. And sometimes when you search for it, you won't have the dash if you're getting these off Amazon or Summit. This is the one you want. Um, it's a half inch 20, so easy to find American style threads here. It's for Ford or Chrysler, but they use it everywhere on uh, you know some larger cars. Uh, these have a much larger knurling area, if you can see that compared to this. Okay, so this is a 0.625, so a 5 eighths inch knurl. And to drill, you know, you're not going to be able to force it in the old holes here, right, that I, what you do is, these are pressed in, these are not screw in, but if you have screw ins, you need to unscrew them, but if you have press in ones, these are going to be, they'd be in these smaller holes, but pressed in from the back, right, and everybody knows you can just tap them out, if you want to save them, get yourself a brass hammer, or uh, put a piece of wood in there before you start hammering on it so you don't mess up the ends of the threads. But you, you're just going to tap on this, you know, give it a little bit of force, but don't like kill it um, straight down, uh, preferably in a vise, because um, you don't want to put too much stress on the flange, even though these are nice beefy flanges. Um, I would just kind of chuck it up in a vise here and just give it some love taps until it starts moving. Once it starts to move, the rest of it will come out really easy. And uh, just hold on to these because these are, you know, you can use them as spares or something if something breaks um, or another project. You don't need to throw them out if they're still good. But what we're going to do is for that part number with the 6.625 neural, I think it is, you're going to want this bit. This is a 37 64ths, okay, drill bit. And so you can find this online somewhere. You know, I bought this individually just for this job. Most most big box stores are not going to have this. You need to get it online somewhere. 37 64ths. And you'll notice it says one half inch reduced shank. You probably want that because you're not going to... Um, just to make it mo just to make it compatible with the most amount of chucks that you can find. Okay, so this is a chuck here. Most of these chucks only go up to like a half inch shank. So if you had something that was this size, you might not be able to fit it into your chuck, especially if you're using just a hand drill. I have an old drill press that was given to me. And the way we're going to do this is to use this drill press's table to clamp the flange up here to keep it perpendicular so that we're not coming in at an angle or having it wobble. And in my case, I don't have a floor standing, but I have this uh, table and I was able to turn both the top and the table a little bit off to the side so that the axle can uh, just kind of drape down here. And these clamps are the only thing holding it on. So this is a clamp set for like a, uh, like this, if you have a milling machine. I have a milling machine, but it's hard for me to use because it's all CNC. There's no manual drilling on that. So I don't have a way to like program this in here and um, we're just gonna do it by hand. So first to get this lined up, we want this to be, uh, Let's see. This comes down here like this. And if, you, if you're just going to use this drill bit and you don't have like a centering bit, which most people don't have if you're using a drill press, um, you can kind of turn it backwards by hand. All right. And you want to look at to make sure that it's uh, as centered as you can get it in the hole. All right. Another way to do it is to... I'll try to zoom in here. You're going to lift this up and down 
you know, as you're going, before you tighten it, lifting it up and down and seeing if the, if the shaft is deflecting a little bit as it's going into the hole. And you want to shift this thing around until you minimize that deflection uh, so that it's like pretty centered and you're not going to like eat away more on the outside or the inside or something. It's kind of forgiving, like it doesn't need to be an exact science with these things. Um, you know, it's, it'll, the holes that, uh, that these go through for your wheels are much larger and your wheels is going to be centered on the ring most likely anyway. So next step is cutting. You want to cut at the right speed. If I cut too slow, it's just going to rub and it's going to dull the tip. If you cut too fast, it's going to cut too deep and you'll get a, you'll get a big piece of, uh, swarf that will catch the end of the mill and then you likely it'll just spin the belt okay so you need to make sure your belt is of the right tightness um, if you're doing this with the hand drill be careful if you have a powerful hand drill it'll like turn it and it'll you'll yank your uh, uh, your arm okay so put a little cut magic on here okay this is a type of tap magic all right you could use it for cutting stuff it's a type of oil okay it stinks but it seems to work to keep the edge of the cutter uh, cooler. You'll get a lot of smoke that stinks, but um, hey, you know, that's what you gotta do. So I only have two more to do in here. It did seem like towards the bottom of the hole, um, either the metal was harder or it was just getting caught up. Um, maybe the oil had burnt up and it wasn't being lubricated enough, but towards the end of the hole, it seems to either catch and I have to, and it spins up here, or uh, we have to, um, I let it cool off and then try to go back in slower so it doesn't catch so much. And then I get that last little sixteenth of an inch to go all the way through. All right, so let's try that. All right. Put a little bit more oil on here. Okay. Wasn't, uh, it wasn't cutting like butter like the other cuts. So either I was like not going the right speed or this stuff was just not uh, lubricating it enough. Yeah, I might have to, uh, let's see if we get through this. Doesn't sound right. Doesn't sound right here. So I want to make sure that, okay, there's a little bit of deflection there. I'm seeing a little bit of deflection. You probably can't see it on the camera. But it, it is, like, moving a little bit. That tells me that this probably shifted. Um, I have these pretty tight, but uh, I want to make sure that there's no like burrs on this thing. Now it still feels pretty sharp. Now sometimes I've gotten in here where I would, yeah, see there's like a little bit of a, look at that. That's a lot of, that's the deflection that you don't want. So it comes in here like this, and then you see it like, boop, move over to the side. Okay, you don't want that. So... I'm going to go in here and uh, loosen these guys up a little bit. He wasn't as tight as he could be. Yeah, and this other one was a little bit loose. The middle one's not doing anything on this cut. But basically, I'm going to see if I can set this down a little bit. You get a balance? Okay. All right, so I'm going to put this in here. going to go back and forth just the tip of it just the tip and then 
gonna close that up. Okay, it sounds good. Like it's not. It sounds like it's not deflecting. It feels like it's not deflecting as it goes in. Okay, now I want to gently tighten these. I guess I could like oil this to make sure that it's not shifting the workpiece as it's going around. That seems pretty good. Let me tighten it some more. And crank down on that. All right, let's see if that works any. All right, hold your ears. slower on this thing. Yeah, I can't go any slower on this mill. on the end of this guy which there shouldn't be but it's not cutting the metal like you would want all right this is probably the worst one yet some other ones have just gone through like butter some of them cut hard at the end this one's having a hard time cutting it only halfway through and uh, maybe that's just the luck of having you know trying to trying to do it live you know I don't do very many live videos but I'm just going to try to turn it by hand here and see if I can feel anything. I think it looks pretty solid. Let me check that this is... Yeah, these haven't, they haven't loosened up any, any. I wish this thing would turn slower. I wish there was a way. Maybe I should uh, put a VFD on here so I can... Uh, and a three-phase motor just so I can adjust the speed because pulley wise I have it set up to give me the most torque and the slowest speed but it's still uh, I still wish it would go a little bit slower I think because it seems to be you know, they say it's about feeds and speeds I think it go a little slower let's try it again actually feel the table the tables like deflecting a little bit as I'm pressing down so I mean I'm pressing more than I should have to so perhaps this um, bit has become dull um, and I'll need to like take any burrs off it yeah because it's not cutting like it should well live and learn this is something you might encounter um, if you do it the way I'm doing it yeah, maybe there's, I'm sure there's a better way to do it, but I couldn't find any videos um, that were really showing how to do it. So the, the step that I would take after this, anyway, once I get these drilled out, it'll be like the other ones here. I'm going to, as you see, there's a little bit of a burr here, so I would clean that up um, probably with just a flap disc. I don't think that my um, burr cutter piece is really going to clean that up. I'm not sure what kind of steel this is, but I'm going to get this, see that little ridge there? You want to get that ridge off and also the ridge on the back. There's definitely going to be a ridge on the back uh, from when you from when you cut it, okay? Just like any hole through metal. All right. Now, to, to pull these through, there's a few different ways to do it. You can pull it through here, and then some people stack washers. I've done it that way. And then you put a nut on the top and you're basically 
the washers have to be big enough for the any neural to poke through and they basically distribute the load and you pull the you pull the stud up using the nut okay using like a a um basically a hex nut okay and then you get fancy and then this is what people end up telling you to use is this um lisley or something i don't know how to pronounce this but l-i-s-l-e okay and this is the part number 22800 wheel stud thing okay you can get these on amazon it's made to do it it's basically a two-piece system i think and it's got like a bearing inside so that you use your acorn nut you're gonna you're gonna basically feed this up feed one of these up through the hole stick this on top use your uh, lug nut that you are going to use for your wheel anyway and crank down on that nut with a um, you know like a big wrench you're going to need more than uh, the standard wrench and then you're that that's actually going to pull the stud up through it okay so that the splines bend the metal and it seats up in there all the way and you just keep an eye on the back until it's all the way seated and um, there's no like special torque setting it depends on the metal and how big of the hole you make and the tolerances of the hole um, that's going to determine how easy so you don't want to go too big on the hole that's why you would never want to cut the hole the same size as, as the outside of the splines here you want to go a little bit smaller and that's that uh, 37 64ths here for for this one so that's about it that's what will happen after i get these last two i've already done I've already done these five, okay, and these turned out fine. Um, one of them I had a, a little bit of trouble, right? And uh, just to show you the back of it here, like the, on the back side, it doesn't seem too bad on these. So, clean it off with uh, brake clean. Um, you know, I have some exposed, like, bearings here, so I'm going to, Definitely like clean all those out to make sure that there's no shrapnel uh, before I go and reinstall these in the axle, in the axle housing. But that's pretty much all you need to do. Um, do five of these, um, you know, and that's how you upgrade to larger sized knurlings. You have to redrill this, redrill the hole a little bit bigger. Um, you could take it to a machine shop and have them charge you whatever in your time for taking it there and picking it up. Um, they're just going to have better machines and they're not going to, you're not going to see this uh, hackery right here. But I like to try and do it myself if it's not that critical. Um, good luck. And uh, if you have better ideas on how to uh, cut these holes without it chattering or leaving, um, you know, maybe I'm burning up the bit somewhat, uh, leave a comment. Thanks.